Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? My name is Adam Moose, and today we're going to be continuing last season series called In Depth. This video is going to be an in depth season 11 guide on Echo Jungle. In this series, we'll be going over the difference between an average Echo player and a great one. We'll be covering Echo's abilities, combos, runes, items, jungle clear, his strengths, weaknesses, and some final tips and tricks. If you do enjoy this video, it would really help me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I upload gameplay videos a couple times per week. I'll be releasing educational videos like this one very often for Season 11. If you want to join the community to talk with other players looking to improve, join the Discord link in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. First things first, let's talk about Echo's abilities and how to use his kit in the best way possible. Echo's passive is called Z Drive Resonance. Every third attack or spell on the same target deals bonus magic damage, and if the target's a champion, grants you a massive burst of move speed. This not only provides Echo with massive single target damage, it also lets you get in and out of fights after comboing down an enemy. Keep in mind that the damage scales with AP and the movement speed scales with your level. Echo's Q is called Time Winder. Echo throws out a time grenade that rewinds back to Echo after a short delay. If it hits an enemy champion, it will not go max range and slow down wherever that champion is. His Q deals damage on the way out and also on the way back to you. Once it does hit its max range, the grenade expands and slows the targets in its field before returning. Keep in mind that it can do damage a maximum of two times on the same target and apply two stacks to your passive. You can also use your mobility spells to creatively reposition where you are so your timewinder can return through enemies. You want to max this ability first since the majority of your damage and it helps you clear as fast as possible. Echo's W is called Parallel Convergence. The passive of Echo's W allows him to deal bonus magic damage to low health enemies. The damage is capped against minions and monsters but still greatly improves your clear speed. You usually want to start W to clear your first buff. For the active, Echo throws out a time field that expands after a 3 second delay. If Echo enters the location after it expands, he gains a massive shield that scales with AP and will stun any enemies caught within the area for a very long time. Keep in mind that the enemy will only be able to see the area at the last second, so placing this area creatively will allow you to CC enemies, grant yourself a massive shield, or even just zone out enemies from a fight. This is Echo's most difficult ability to master as landing it can be very difficult to time correctly. A good tip is to aim your W to where your enemy's escape path will be, so they're either forced to fight you or take the stun. Echo's E is called Phase Dive. Echo dashes in the target direction, empowering his next basic attack to have bonus range, a small cast time, and allows him to blink to his next target, dealing magic damage. Phase Dive resets Echo's basic attack timer and will lock you onto your target no matter if they dash or flash away, taking you with them. You can cast any of your other abilities while dashing, which is usually how you want to optimize your damage output. You want to be maxing E second as well. And finally, Echo's ultimate is called Chrono Break. If you put a point into Chrono Break and it's off cooldown, Echo will reveal a delayed image of himself that tracks where he was 4 seconds ago. Once activated, Echo travels back in time becoming immune to damage, healing himself, and exploding the area where his after image was. The healing and damage scale with AP which pretty much gives you a get out of jail free card. You also heal more if you took heavy damage in the last 4 seconds. This is Echo's signature ability for a reason. Chrono Break allows you to go to the brink of death, outputting out as much damage as you can, before rewinding back to where you were before, out of harm's way. Also keep in mind that this ability can be used aggressively, since the explosion damage is off the charts. Just use this with caution, since this is your main escape tool. Combos now let's get into some of Echo's combos. I won't go too in depth with these, since most times it will depend on the situation, but these are the most common and important ones that you start using right away in your games. Echo's most basic combo, E, Q, E2. You dash forward and throw out your Q, which makes the skill shot easier to land. Once you reach your target, you'll have reached 3 passive stacks, bursting your target, and proccing the move speed. Next we'll talk about Q Rocket Belt and E Rocket Belt. This simply means pressing your E or Q before using your rocket belt. It's very simple, yet effective. 
You'd be surprised how many times people get caught off guard by the double gap closer and they end up panic flashing and you follow right after them. WEQ E2 Auto Attack. This is a pretty simple burst combo that you usually want to set up out of vision to surprise with your W. This lets you pop up in front of your enemies, stun them, and use your full burst combo. WE Flash E2 Q Auto Attack. This is almost the same, but adding in your flash for an even further gap closer. Always E before you flash so that you can lock onto your targets before they have time to react. You can also save your Q if you think your enemy will dash or flash away to follow them up with another slow. Runes. Now let's talk about Echo's best rune choices. For starters, Echo's first page is pretty much always domination. Although I personally always run Dark Harvest as my keystone of choice, Electrocute is another viable option for pure burst damage. I prefer Dark Harvest just because it scales amazingly into the mid and late game where Echo usually thrives. Next up, Sudden Impact is a no-brainer since Echo's E is such a short cooldown. The magic pen you get just increases your burst damage which is perfect for your kit. In most elos, I would recommend Eyeball Collection next to give you that extra ability power throughout the game. Zombie Ward is another option in high elos to give your team more vision control when running a sweeper. To be honest though, Eyeball Collection is just a better rune to solo carry games, so unless you're really high elo, I will not recommend Zombie Ward. Last up in the domination tree, Ravenous and Ultimate Hunter. Ravenous Hunter is what I see most Echo players running, since it actually gives you infinite sustain later in the game. It not only keeps you topped up in the jungle, but also in fights. Ultimate Hunter can be a good option if you don't think the sustain is needed. As mentioned earlier, Echo's ultimate is an amazing playmaking tool. Making this a shorter cooldown is extremely valuable. I would just say that this setup's a bit less forgiving for new players with less sustain. Now for secondaries, the most common option is Inspiration. Magical Footwear, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight are the main choices that fit Echo's playstyle. You can also take the perfect timing for a free stopwatch into a team full of assassins. This also speeds up your Zhonya's build path. The other secondary option that I use a lot is Sorcery. Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm is the full scaling offensive setup which just maximizes the damage that you do in the late game. Absolute Focus also improves your clear speed with Ravenous Hunter since you'll be above 70% HP most of the time. Lastly, Nimbus Cloak is another option for an extra burst of move speed along with the Blue Smite. Keep in mind that these runes are always subject to change with new patches. These are just the main runes being run by the best Echo players right now. Items. Next up, Echo's best item choices and builds. In general, Echo's build path is pretty straightforward with only a couple situational items to choose from. Most of the time, Blue Smite is the move on Echo since it perfectly fits his assassin playstyle. In some cases where the enemy team is extremely heavy bruisers and melee champs, you can also run Red Smite although less common. Now, Mythic Items. The most popular option by far is Hextech Rocket Belt. This gives Echo an extra gap closer, which allows you to close the distance against long range enemies. This item also gives you passive magic penetration on every additional legendary item that you pick up. Another viable option is Night Harvester. Although you don't get the extra gap closer that Rocket Belt gives you, the extra burst and ability haste that the passive gives makes this a very viable choice. I usually pick up Night Harvester if I'm playing into multiple melee bruisers and tanks. Ability Power and Ability Haste are the two main stats that make Echo the late game monster that he is. The core items in Echo's build are usually Lichbane and Zhonya's. Lichbane has amazing synergy since the Spellblade passive procs on your E. This lets you dash in and output a boatload of damage within seconds. Zhonya's is great since it gives you that extra defensive tool needed to stall out fights or dodge key abilities. One thing to keep in mind is that when you go into Zhonya's stasis, it gives your after image time to catch back up to you. Jump in, unload your combo, and then Zhonya's. When you get out of stasis with enemies surrounding you, alt and deal huge damage while also healing yourself back up to bait enemies in. For boots, the most common option would be Sorcerer's Shoes. You can also go Merc Treads into heavy CC, plated steel caps into full AD auto tag based teams, or even Ionian Boots of Lucidity if you're looking for more cooldown reduction and a quicker flash cooldown. Nasher's Tooth is another option that has turned out to be very viable in the new season. 
I recommend picking up a Nashor's Tooth into very bruiser and tanky teams since the on hit auto attack damage works surprisingly well with Echo. To close out your build, you want to look for items such as Morello for healing reduction, Void Staff into a lot of magic resist, Deathcap for maximum damage, and Banshee's Veil for a needed shield into heavy magic damage teams. To close out the item section, I have one last thing to mention, Dark Seal and Midge Eyes. I almost always pick up an early Dark Seal on Echo. This item alone makes Echo extremely dangerous to play against, since if you pick up any stacks whatsoever, it can really snowball out of control. I also highly recommend upgrading into a Midge Eyes if you're over 6 stacks, since it not only gives you a massive payout if you get more stacks, it also now counts towards your Mythic passives since it's a legendary item, which gives it even more value. Jungle Clears Now let's get into the next section, Jungle Clears on Echo. Echo is a very weak level 1. For your first clear, it's ideal to get a leash to greatly improve your clear speed and HP. On your multi-target camps such as Raptors and Wolves, make sure to not waste too many auto attacks hitting the small minions. Depending on what stage it is in the game, sometimes only autoing to proc your passive is enough to clear efficiently. Your Q will deal most of the AoE damage, and your E will help you to burst down the high HP targets. Be very careful when dueling jungles in the early game. Echo's early game burst is not enough to deal with most of the meta picks, especially ones with Conquer, since they'll outsustain your burst damage. When looking to make plays, try to find situations where you can outnumber the enemy or burst down a target with a teammate's follow up. Do not overforce plays early. I see too many players inting the game away on Echo for a single scuttle crab. There's no stress. You must have a scaling mindset when making early decisions to be consistent on Echo. Now let's get into the best clears for Echo in the early game. If you're looking to contest Scuttle on spawn at 315, clearing 5 camps into Scuttle is the best bet for you. Echo is a slightly slower clear than champions like Hecarim, Olaf, and Lilia, who can full clear and be there on time for Scuttle. The 5 camp clear allows you to path towards the side of the map that you want, contesting Scuttle at level 3. If you secure it, you'll hit level 4 and can start looking to make plays. If you're facing a strong early game dueling jungler such as Olaf, try to path towards the opposite side of the map as them. This will allow you to clear and avoid fighting in the early game. Which side you start on will really depend on the jungle and lane matchups. With more experience, you can decide to path towards specific lanes, depending on if you're looking to avoid or start fights. To add on to this, if you know that the enemy jungler is also full clearing towards the opposite scuttle, and you have no gank options, feel free to finish your full clear before taking scuttle. This will just allow you to recall with even more gold, and keep a fast farming pace. Another very powerful but risky path is a 3 camp gank path. This just involves clearing both buffs and usually either Gromp or Raptors to begin making plays. I would only recommend this if you have a lane that you know for sure is gankable and your team has a solid setup tool. Keep in mind that if you do this path and fail your gank, you'll be very far behind. With that being said, Echo actually has pretty strong ganks and a lot of players will not expect you to show up in their lane early with red buff and your W placed in their escape path. To close out the jungle clear section, I want to briefly mention getting early invaded. If you're versus champs like Rek'Sai, who can easily one-shot you at level 3, always make sure to play cautiously in your jungle and when face-checking brushes. The amount of times I've got snowballed on by face-checking a Rek'Sai who is waiting for me to contest Scuttle, learn from my mistakes and keep it in your mind at all times in the early game. Weaknesses Echo's biggest weakness is his reliance on item spikes to carry. This basically just means Echo needs time to scale up. He's not a great skirmisher in the early game, so you'll need to find creative ways to stay relevant in the game without just straight up 1v1ing the enemy jungler. Your main goal should be to get your item spikes as early as possible without giving the enemy an advantage. Obviously getting ahead is even better, but if you're versus an early game jungler, going even and scaling can be a huge win in itself. Echo can also struggle into comps with heavy CC. Be extremely careful when diving into the enemy backline versus champs like Leona who can lock you down before you even have time to ult. In scenarios like this, you usually want to try and be the secondary engage and let a tankier frontliner soak up the CC for you. Strengths Now let's get into Echo's strengths and what makes him an amazing pick in the jungle. First off, Echo has phenomenal carry potential, especially in the mid to late game. Once you hit your mythic item and beyond, you become a serious threat for any squishing champion on the enemy team. This makes Echo a great solo queue pick, since you can actually assassinate everyone one by one and carry games by yourself. Next up, 
In my opinion, Echo also has an extremely high skill cap, which makes him very rewarding to master. Putting in a lot of hours learning the ins and outs of Echo's kit can make a huge difference in your gameplay. I definitely consider this a good thing, since once you develop a deep understanding of your limits, you can pull off some seriously insane outplays. And lastly, I just want to mention how Echo's ult really does give you a way to make plays and get out scot-free. This is a tool that really separates him from all other assassins. Sometimes even going in just to chunk out enemies and ulting back can give your team the advantage you needed before a fight. Learning how to push yourself right to the brink of death while baiting enemies can really swing fights in your favor, especially since solo queue players are very reckless and bloodthirsty. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Echo Jungle. If you stayed to the end and have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you did enjoy, it helps me out so much if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my posts. I post gameplay guides every couple days and I'll be cranking out more in-depth guides just like this one for Season 11. If you're interested in joining the community of like-minded players looking to improve, be sure to join the Moose Den Discord, the link will be in the description. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, really appreciate it. Until the next video, peace out.